a blessing to see you back tonight. And tonight, the <coughs> title of the message is, um, What Does a Husband Expect from His Wife? But, uh, as I did last night, I think I'm going to monkey with that a little bit. So, I uh, hope you'll uh, indulge me. But let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer, and then let's uh, open the Word together. Heavenly Father, just want to thank you so very much for this church, Lord, for the opportunity to open your Word, to talk about um, this subject, Lord, that is so near your heart, and that uh, how marriage Lord, uh, shows the gospel in just the love that a husband gives to a wife and that love in turn that a wife gives to a husband in the form of respect. Father, I simply ask that, Lord, you would take anything that I have to say to, tonight, Father. I confess my own total inadequacy. And uh, total inability, Lord, to speak words that would go to anyone's heart. Yet, Father, I pray that you would take your word, that you would just anoint it, that you would just touch hearts and lives, Lord, touch the lives of both men and women, as we are in um, this thing, Lord, that we call marriage. And, Father, I thank you that there is such wonderful blessing and such wonderful uh, oneness and uh, just great, great joy and happiness when it is right. And so, Father, let us not settle for it not being right. Let us go deeper into you that we might, that we might find the joy of being one, a husband being one with his wife, a wife being one with your husband. And this we pray and just uh, seek now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and say that this is not the, a message that I am the most comfortable preaching because typically, as I said as a counselor, I tend to be tougher on men. Because I'm a man, I tend to expect more from men. Um, because I'm a man, I expect other men to man up and be the men God calls us to be in marriage. But this message isn't really about men. <laughs> this message is about what does a husband not expect, but what does a husband need from his wife? What does a husband need from his wife? And let me just go ahead and say, um, I find so many people uh, come to me or come to pastors for counseling. And they might say something like, um, is my mic on? No, it's not on. What do I need to do? Put the button and hold it. Is that good? No. Just a moment. Technical difficulties. Lift the button and hold it. Hold the button until the green light comes on. There we go. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Sorry, the guy did this for me the other day. That's all. It's all good. Okay. Um, you know, I find that people will come and speak to me and for counseling or have gone to pastors. And uh, let's say things are going wrong in their marriage. Let's say that um, somebody else is paying some attention to them and uh, they, uh, they just think, you know, I just feel like life would be so wonderful if I could be away from this mean person and go over here and be with this nice person. And when the Bible and fidelity and loyalty and running away from sin and pursuing righteousness is brought up, 
generally the response that is given is, well, doesn't God want me to be happy? And I've come up with a wonderful, a wonderful answer to that. No. <laughs> the fact is God is not interested at all in whether or not you're happy. Now, that may sound mean and callous and crude, but you can be very happy and go straight to hell. And God does not want that for you at all. But God knows, because the Bible says there is, what? Pleasure in sin for a season. Sin will make you happy for a little while. If you indulge the self, Satan will give you all the reasons in the world to indulge the self. And yet, God knows that true happiness comes from joy. And joy only comes from walking with God in holiness and obedience. And so, when people say, well, doesn't God want me to be happy? Well, of course God wants you contented and satisfied, but if, if happiness comes at the cost of sin, absolutely not. And so, you know, I find that people get married so often... What's the main reason? This person makes me happy. And so it happens that when that person no longer feels happy in the relationship, they go looking for happiness. And now they may not run out and divorce, but they may seek to find happiness in an addiction, in a habit, in clicking the TV remote, in uh, food, in uh, other friends. They try to find happiness all kinds of ways. But the fact is that we have to remember that marriage, God did not give us marriage to make us happy. God gave us marriage as, you know what I call it? It's a pressure cooker in which God turns up the heat and the self begins to melt away. Because marriage is God's appointed and divine tool for sanctification to make us more like Jesus Christ. And that can only happen when the self is melted away. And I don't know of anything that does it like being married. Because consider these questions. At some point in marriage, I have to realize that I'm a jerk. Okay, I mean, <laughs> forgive me, I'm just being brutally honest here. At some point, in, I mean, I, granted, Scripture says that the person who is single can pursue after God and give themselves to God and devote themselves to God. If God calls you to that and we're going to deal with that some Wednesday night, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. But it's only also, and I can realize that being single, but not the way you do when you're married. Being married, I, I really did not think that I was selfish until I married my precious wife. And then I learned that I was selfish. Let me give you a, a, um, an example. Sweetheart, I'm sorry, but I'm going to tell a story. <laughs> we had not been married long. Just a few days, uh, barely a couple weeks. And um, we decided we wanted, we enjoyed having people in our home. My wife was really getting into this cooking thing, and praise God for that. Uh, and we were having people in our home, and then we would play games with them, uh, board games, that kind of thing. And um, I grew up in a home. I'm sorry, I'm moving all around from the video camera. It's me, I apologize. I grew up in a home where Mama did the dishes because her of her spoiled rotten kids. We just never thought of it. Um, Mama did the dishes. Matter of fact, that was her thing. If you went and tried to do it, she would say, get out of my kitchen. This is mine. Okay, that's how I grew up. Well, um... So I didn't necessarily just come into marriage thinking that way. Well, um, we had some people over. Uh, they left. It was around 9.30, close to 10 o'clock. I had to go to the network the next day. So I went in and pre prepared myself for bed. Went to bed. My wife went in the kitchen and did the dishes. 
And I kind of noticed that the pots were banging a little louder and a little louder and a little louder. And, um, but I really didn't take the hint. And um, then a little bit later on, she came to bed. Well, being newlyweds, I thought it, uh, turning around and being a little amorous might be a good idea. Well, all I got was her back. Stayed that way for the rest of the night, and I thought, hmm, okay. So we talked about it, and I learned I better start helping with the dishes. So, um, again, I didn't mean to be selfish, but I learned real quick that I was, and it wasn't just that, it was it was lots of other ways. Um, but again, you know, it's it's only well, here's what I'm saying. That's one of the ways that marriage is a pressure cooker, which for me, it began to melt me down and say, God, help me to be more thoughtful. Help me to be more gentle. Help me to be more, more, more loving. Uh, not just for me, ways for my wife too, ways that God began to show her things about herself. And so, but again, God doesn't necessarily, you know, when those things begin to happen, it doesn't necessarily feel very happy. Sometimes it's downright hard. And yet, God is doing the wonderful thing of using another person whom I love to cause me to grow to be more like Jesus. And that is what God is after in your marriage. And as that happens, you know, as I said last night with the triangle, as we grow closer to Jesus, we can't help but grow closer to one another. But also, we bring all this baggage and all this mess into marriage. And imagine people loaded down with bags and luggage and carrying suitcases and trying, coming up and trying to hug one another, holding on to all that stuff. And yet, marriage is the process of learning little by little to lay those things down to the point where you can be close to one another. Now, I've not even touched the subject yet of what does a husband need from his wife. Um, let me go, uh, let me talk quickly about the reason I don't like the word expectation. Because expectation basically involves there's something I want you to be, and if you're not going to be that, then I'm going to be upset with you. Or I'm going to be, I'm going to pout. Or I'm going to um, not be happy. Um... And so, you know, the Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Another word for expectations are not a good thing. Because if we set our hopes so much on that something's going to be this way, and then it turns out not to be that way, then we become sick at heart. And I hope that when we marry, we find that our husband or our wife meets every need and every desire and they're the person we absolutely thought they would be. But most of the times we find out this is wonderful, this, uh, I'm not so sure. And we can let those things make us sick at heart. Again, how often has this happened? I uh, recently had a uh, couple come in and they had anticipated something and looked forward to something and uh, it turned out that something happened where it wasn't quite right or not the same way it had been anticipated. And so when it wasn't that way, they said, just forget it. It's just, we won't even do it. Well, how often does that happen? We let some little disappointment just spoil anything good that might happen. Well, a lot of times we do that in our expectations of each other. So that, it's much better to talk about needs. So tonight, let's talk about what does a husband need from his wife. Now, again, we talked already Sunday morning, yesterday morning, about the whole thing. If God calls, Ephesians 5, God calls a man to love his wife as Jesus Christ loves his church. The man is the one to die, to lay down his life for his wife. 